just a big, fat panda. I'm not a big, fat panda. I'm the big, fat panda. Skadoosh. Hello and welcome to Big Fat Panda show number 52. Today's guest is none other than Miss Carolina Grabova. She is an actress. She's done Disney commercials. She is a Disney lover. She has her own podcast. Uh, there are times where you have to accept that you are not going to be the prettiest person on your own show. This will happen to you. You'll see. And uh, this is one of those times where I'm just not going to be the prettiest. Although I've tried. I've got these weird like red dots that are on my forehead. And for those of you in HD, I really have tried to help you and not suffer looking at this face. I've put like makeup that you can probably see slightly caked on badly. Let me thank my exclusive partner, Magical Vacation Planner. If you, a loved one, a family member, or a friend are planning a trip to Walt Disney World, check out Magical Vacation Planner. Go to pandamvp.com to fill out a form for a no-obligation quote, or call the number on your screen there. I believe it's 407-442-3105. They are a Disney-authorized earmarked agency. We will talk more about them in a little bit. Let's start off first with, I cheated on you. I did! I went on a Royal Caribbean cruise line for work. No, it was not Disney, but I had a great time. So I just wanted to get that out of the way, and I did wind up getting a Disney story out of it. So it took a week out of my monthly show making up, but I got a Disney story out of it, you'll see. It was Epcot's 35th anniversary. Here to kick off Epcot's 35th anniversary celebration, please welcome Mariachi Cobra. <laughs> and will always be an optimistic celebration of the real world brought to life through the magic of Disney. So all the characters came out and it was really nice, but what really was the highlight of it was the a cappella group Voices of Liberty over at the American Pavilion. They came out and did a old medley of like 80s Epcot vintage things that are from attractions that aren't around anymore. Wow. Come and form the old the turn of the century, folks, discovered a barrel of fun. Take the pictures by the light of the sun. Smile, smile, hug, hug, look at the camera, hold your breath and say cheese. Little did they realize back then, they were making memories. Veggie, veggie, veggie. We So sticking for just a second with old Epcot, nobody really seems to remember the show Splash-tacular. I loved it. I was very young, and it is silly to watch now, but I wish they would do shows similar to this again. So basically, they're celebrating the fountain, but just the first few words, it's just ridiculous. This fountain's magic. Mickey deserves a hand. It's liquid magic better than any band. Yeah! That's the line. I'm not kidding. Listen. Our fountain's magic. Make it deserves a hand. It's liquid magic. And it's better than any band. Join in. But it was really great because some villain comes out and she's just gonna mess things up and, you know, do a whole bye, Felicia. Who are you? None of you. Why are you here? Intergalactic wars have robbed my planet of all color and life. So, we are here 
want to take yours! That's cute, Cuddly. Don't be afraid, Minnie. Okay, fellas, do your stuff. But everything is okay in the end, and they pull this cord on their back. I don't know if you can catch this from this scene when the music crescendos, they pull a cord on their back, and these uh, terse butterfly wings that were, you know, tensed up inside their backpack flood out, and it was awesome. It happens And then some balloon comes up right behind the ball. It was incredible. So depending upon when you are watching this, it is probably Halloween or Halloween has just ended. I hope they repeat something next year over at the Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground. Uh, me, Corinne, who does the merchandise segment here on the show, and Katie at Adventures of a Disney on Instagram, we went to the Return to Sleepy Hollow. And basically you walked the trail to the Circle D, is it Circle? I want to say Circle K, but that's a gas station here. And you watch the Sleepy Hollow movie, Ichabod Crane, and then the Headless Horseman is there for a photo opportunity. It was only like $23. You got a pin also worth every penny. With all your might, you'll be down in the hollow there. Keep your head, look out, beware. With a hip, hip, and a flippity-clop, he's down looking for a head to swap. So don't try to figure out a plan You can't reason with a feather Yeah, that reveal after the movie was awesome. The Epcot Food and Wine Festival is still going on. You have until November 13th. I can't believe it's ending, and they extended it this year, but it still feels like it was too fast. I had to go and visit the motherland, the Italian pavilion. They had penne alla vodka with shrimp. I do not like shrimp, so I just asked them to remove the shrimp. Unfortunately, it's the same price, so I saved them a lot of money. But what a delicious penne alla vodka. It was so tasty, I, I can't even explain it to you. Savory, tasty, you do not taste vodka. A delicious tomato sauce, robust flavor, nothing mild. And that cannoli, which was, usually the cannoli is not completely dipped in chocolate. There's a little chocolate drizzle. These cannolis are completely chocolate. I cry, it's delicious. I know good cannolis, I'm from New York. But being from New York, I even though I was on Long Island, I was far from Coney Island. But Coney Island had a Ferris wheel, I want to say Wonder Wheel, I don't remember if that's what it was called. And it was like the Ferris wheel was on a roller coaster, like over in California Adventure in Disneyland. Scary. You feel like the car is going to come off the track. And if not for this little breaker or these little two wheels with a stopper, it would. So Corinne and Katie are in Disneyland and I'm looking at their videos from the Wonder Wheel and it is just too funny. There are a lot that I cannot show you that have bad words, but here are some of the quick clips without bad words. So I'm gonna attempt this whole Mickey's fun wheel of death, this spinning thing. I've never done it. I'm probably gonna regret this decision. It looks like it swings a lot. I'm not really happy, but we'll see how it goes. So here we go. Right now it's not too bad. It's bad. It's really bad. Okay. Corinne wanted to go on this ride. Katie didn't know what. Because I'm scared and 
I'm cold! And I'm screaming because this is terrifying! So, Mickey's Fun Wheel. That was an experience. One that I'll probably never repeat again. But, yeah! I, I did it. So that's cool. Yeah! Remember I told you I had a story from Royal Caribbean that ties into Disney? Anyhow, I'd like to showcase one of Magical Vacation Planner's agents, Nicole Bellenfant. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. I've extra everything except that, but Nicole Bellenfant. We ported in Falmouth, Jamaica, and she was going to take a tour to feed the homeless. Yeah, Nicole, an agent for Magical Vacation Planner, was going to take a tour to feed the homeless. Turns out that not many people booked the tour and they were canceling it. So that said, in and, in and of itself. She hears the cab driver on the phone with his mom. His mom is sick. And she finds out, I guess just by listening in on the phone call, that the mother's sugar was over 500. If, if you know anything about sugar numbers, that's deadly. You're almost going to go into a coma, if not already. She notices that he has a Mickey Mouse keychain or some sort of a Mickey Mouse thing. We'll have a picture here on him. And that brings up more of a conversation. And she says, you've got to go to your mom. And he says, no, I've got to take you somewhere or back to the ship or something. I forget the complete exact details. And she says, no, I want to take your mom. I want to go see your mom. She, her sugar's at 500. This is a cab driver in a country she does not know. So he keeps saying, no, we'll go later. She finds out that money is pretty much the reason the mother doesn't want to go to the clinic. When she asks why, how much does it cost, he tells her it's $4,000. And, you know, her ability to help at that point is like, no. He finds out that's $20 US, it was $4,000 and whatever the Jamaican currency is. So she says, no, come on, I will pay. And he takes her to his home in Jamaica where she meets his mom who still does not want to go to the clinic. She doesn't want to take the money. She explains to them that she does watercolor paintings and she will do a watercolor painting for the mom. And the mom then gets her interest peaked and says, oh, I could put this on my wall. Or she might say something like, I can put this on my wall, man. So she goes and does, the mom says, okay, I agree to go. Uh, Nicole goes with the Jamaican cab driver and pays for the mom uh, to go to the clinic and you know I don't know what the end of the story is I know that she left at that point but she did a good thing and I said you know I have to showcase this on the show I can tie it into Disney because he had Mickey Mouse on him and again I have to tell you if you are going to book your vacation with anyone that's the kind of person you want to book it with, right? You want that person to worry about your family vacation or your personal vacation for that matter. So I would like to showcase Nicole here on this show. And if you want to contact her, please look at that number and call it on the screen there. Uh, that is Nicole Bellenfont. And uh, if you tell her that Panda sent you, that would be awesome. You do not have to. But I said, Nicole, you definitely deserve uh, a hand. So I'm clapping for Nicole. And now let's go look at some more merchandise from Corinne Anderson in another episode of Mouseaholics. Hi guys and welcome back to Mouseaholic. My name is Corinne Anderson and today we may still be in Halloween season for some of you all, but it's starting to look like Christmas here at Disney World. I'm going to look at some of my favorite Disney merchandise, Christmas style. Let's go. So the first item we're looking at today is this awesome castle countdown figure for Christmas. And I know there's like a lot of days left to Christmas, but I mean, get it now because it's adorable, sparkly, and a must have for the Christmas season. So we teased these beauties in our last episode, but I just have to give you a closer look at them. These are the new handbag ornament collection. You know last year or two years maybe ago, they released a shoe ornament collection. Now get the matching handbags. You have Disney princesses, you have Disney villains, and then we have like Nightmare Before Christmas, Alice, Minnie. I mean, if there's a Disney character you like, you're gonna find a handbag ornament to match. So I know this is something you all can afford, of course. These are the most incredible things you will ever see at Disney Springs. The new Haunted Mansion chairs. How amazing are these? But you know, win the lottery first so you can hit up about $4,000 to $2,000 for these two because they are pretty, pretty spendy guys. But you know, when you want to say, welcome foolish mortals to the Haunted Mansion, this is what you need. They also sell this little apron here for you guys who wants to have some fun in the kitchen. 
So that was all for this month of Mouseaholic. I hope you enjoyed all the merchandise that we showed you today. And make sure you come back next month for even more Disney merchandise. And to see Disney merchandise every day, please visit Disney Lifestylers on all social medias. And as we were walking in here, you know, the shopping bug wraps you. Ask Panda what he got, because it's pretty cool. And now let's get to our guest, Carolina Grobova. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Carolina Grabova. Did I say that right? You said it right. See, Perfect. Oh, that was so good. Grabova. Yes. Okay. And look at him. Sure. Oh, <laughs> let me give you the hug, please. Mwah. So good to see you. So good to see you. Now, this lady, in all honesty, was already here. We did an interview. Man. It was awesome. <laughs> But we spoke about so many things that had to do with the possibility at D23. All the rumors. That never happened. No, they never <laughs> And we just thought, oh, I kept thinking I can edit this. I didn't, could, no. You couldn't. Okay, the rumor that we were talking about the most was, you are Brazilian. I am Brazilian, as you can tell by my accent. <laughs> a lot of people think I'm Brazilian. Brazilian or Cuban, I get all the time. I'm Italian, but I get Brazilian and Cuban. Um, that, uh, that there was going to be a Brazilian uh, pavilion at yeah. Epcot. So we talk about that like a lot. <laughs> a lot more than I thought. Let's cover it real quick. You know, there's still there's still a lot to be announced for Epcot, and it's still a chance. But we thought at D23 they were gonna say that. We they... thought, um, yeah, it didn't happen. Not sure if it's gonna happen. We've been hearing that this one rumor for about what ten years now. Yes. It's been a very long time. But there was a reason that you thought maybe this time it might. You said that the the travel. Oh. I feel like a Brazilian audience, the tourists, Brazilian groups that come here, they are key for Disney. Disney needs those groups, uh, Latin Americans coming. And yeah, I thought it was time for Brazil, but it didn't happen. I think they're coming regardless of if there's a Brazilian pavilion or not. So Now they're talking Spain pavilion. That would be fun too. Hey. The more the merrier. I guess, yeah, the Spain Pavilion, but that really doesn't cover Brazil, kind of, right? No, mm -hmm. no, not at all. No. That's like saying Mexico would be the same. No. So people think Latin like, America, Latino and Latino like, is the same thing. Just build more pavilions. That's all I want. <laughs> well, at least we're getting Ratatouille. Exactly. So, first of all, I like to be the pretty one on my show. <laughs> it's not happening in this show. I'm not I'll even trying. It. You do commercials for I... Disney. I do commercials. We have to tiptoe around what we can Disney. talk about, but what can you tell us that you've done? I done videos for Disney in Portuguese, so I was hosting, talking about the parks and in Portuguese for the Brazilian market, of course. But that was so special. It was so special. Now, Portuguese is different than Spanish. Uh, yes, yeah, very different. Uh, we have different vocabulary, but grammar structure is pretty much the same. But what about Brazilian? Is that Portuguese? It is Portuguese. It'll be the same as comparing like Dialects. English from here to like British English. Oh, oh, yeah, exactly the same. We have like little words that are different, but it's exactly the same. Language. Great analogy. I need. Yeah. Stupid analogy, so I can get it in my head. That, that was a good That's analogy. A, it's not. It's a valid question. I used to have two grandmothers. One was from North Italy. One was from South Italy, Sicily. And I would try to tell one what I said to yeah. the other. Nobody understood what I was talking about, so I never learned it because it was too different. My grandmother is from Sicily. Stop. We're cousins. Wait, wait. You're oh. Sicilian and and Brazilian? Yeah. Okay, that's dangerous. I know, I, I have a You have a temper, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not going to make her mad. I'm surprised you came back for the, for the second interview. No, no, I just got the good side, the good side. Oh my God, my husband is uh, is from Ukraine, so we have like polar opposite personalities. I'm like really loud, and he's like all quiet. Let's talk about your YouTube channel. I know you say you haven't <laughs> updated it, but it doesn't matter. You can still see it. It's, uh, what's the name of the YouTube channel? Do you remember? Yes, it's the same as Janela Para Orlando. I remember that. Janela? Para Orlando. Which means I remember window something. Oh my gosh, yes. Everybody keeps calling me Janela, they think, because of my Instagram handle is Janela para Orlando, so they think my name is Janela, and Janela just means window in Portuguese, so my handle is literally window to Orlando. <laughs> People call me Janela. On YouTube, we're going to go visit that. That's awesome. So when you have to film one of these commercials, mm -hmm. is it in one day you can do it? It depends. It depends how complex is the commercial. Disney is really organized, man, hands down. So you get there and they're pretty much ready to go or you're still hanging around having Usually coffee? if it's pictures, if we're doing pictures, it's a two hour to three hour the most, in and out. They okay. know what they want, they know exactly, it's mapped, you go and that's it. 
so easy. Uh, if it's a commercial, it could last for 17 hours. I stayed there for 17 hours. I taped, uh, we tape a series of commercials and that, like the first time I taped for them was about five years ago, <laughs> it's been a while. And it was a seven day seven days straight we were staying wow. in a disney hotel and we were taping every single day one of the days we stay for 17 hours but at disney who, like i mean <laughs> so hopefully in the future you'll have more of these commercials and i have a good feeling you probably will i hope so i love working for them i cried first time i taped stop oh my gosh it was so embarrassing it was when you so got the call to audition or no you... no it was even worse in front of the client and everything <laughs> because you know it's like i walked in the park was closed and there was cinder Cinderella Castle and I'm taping like I'm talking right in front of Cinderella Castle and hosting for Disney and, and like I can't do that right now. No, don't do that. So, yeah, gonna... I was crying. I was like, that's so special. That's <laughs> awesome. I, I would have cried. That's awesome. What can you? What is your first memory of Disney as a child? Um, coming with my grandparents and uh, my mom for vacation. I turned nine years old actually at Disney. And this year especially, I've been thinking a lot about this trip because my grandfather passed away. So, but those memories I have, oh, they're gonna be with me forever. When Epcot uh, 35 came and I was looking at my pictures, first time at Epcot, and I was pretty much dressed as Figment because I love Figment. I had a cap. Do you have a picture of Oh, yes, I have a picture of that. Hold on, we're gonna put that here. I wanna see you as Figment. Yeah. And I had the little cap. I have like all the 80s style going on. <laughs> and Grandpa by my side, so it's awesome. Oh, yeah. I thought you meant this Epcot 35. Oh, no, like I'm talking like, oh. I was looking at the, at the um, uh, pictures from my first time at Epcot because I'm like, oh, I love it. Epcot is my favorite park. Okay, I want to see you dress as figure right now also. Oh Probably my just gosh. I do have the, uh, my mom got the ears, so I have the foot in my The, the 80s were the best at the, Epcot. The 80s was the best. That, that park was the 80s. Oh, it was awesome. I'm sorry, we're, we actually edited here because we were reminiscing <laughs> about the 80s at Epcot. And I don't I don't know, I didn't think you were old enough. You remember Veggie Food? Oh, food? I don't know. I'm old enough. <laughs> You remember the veggie fruit fruit? I do. I remember the song. All the 80s stuff. You remember Horizons? Oh, everything. They were singing at Epcot 30, uh, 35th, and they were singing the medley. And I'm like, my husband is not a Disney person. So he's like, what the heck? And I'm like, ah. They Project do that a lot, Disney. They cancel that. something, yeah. and then they sell us memorabilia and play music from it just to... Just to Torture, torture. Me. A lot of people will think negatively on the Brazilian tour groups. I myself have never had an issue. Mm -hmm. Do you see a culture difference between Brazil and here when they come? I think I think a lot changed when I when I was growing back in Brazil. I, I did. I was one of the kids, you know, in uniform, following the tour guide with a flag, and we chant and we loud. I thought that was so cool. I totally get that can be annoying. I'm on the other side now. It can be it can be annoying for anyone that is not a teenager, but it's not a Brazilian thing. It's a teenager group thing. You put it like 20, 30 teenagers together, and man, they they're are all, loud. Yeah, they are so loud. I think the re reason why people might complain about it is they're not understanding the language of the chant, and that worries them. Oh, if it gosh, was it, English, and mm -hmm, they knew what they were saying, we're here at Disney, you know, yeah, the family. Yeah. But it, it's it, okay, guys. It's all yes. Like, little, little I've always seen those people having things. fun. Yeah. But I, I know I've seen people be like, oh my God, what's going on? It yeah, seems... but like now that I'm an adult, and well, sort of, <laughs> I'm still a child deep down inside. But yeah, it, it gets annoying. There's a bunch of teenagers yelling, and you're in line, and it takes like 40 minutes, and you're like, why? As long as they're not in my but way, I'm happy that people are happy. It has Brazilians changed. want to come here not in the tour groups anymore. They do sometimes because they need like language help, and it's it's a new country. They, they don't speak the language, and they've never been here. They a lot need of times, assistance. it's also the first time out of exactly. Brazil. Exactly. But they like to come with them themselves with their family they like to explore more so it's it's changing a lot yeah. but I'm really excited for the new Star Wars experience at Disney Springs coming up this holiday the virtual reality <gasps> did oh, you book gosh. it yet? gosh no not yet you can reserve it online I forget the, the void.com I just wrote uh, 
I wrote a uh, piece for my blog on it because I was researching and I was like, oh, uh, VR is so cool. But when I saw The Void, if you guys never seen, go to their website. That's amazing. Okay, so tell me about your blog. I forgot you had a blog. I do, I do. I'm gonna put the link up there again. And it's the Sage, Anela para Orlando. I try to keep it all the same, you know, make it easy. That's good. Um, I write, I don't write that much. I try to write things that, like being a Brazilian, I first started because I thought not complete information was coming to my market. Hmm. I follow a lot of the American bloggers and you know, there's spectacular work being done. And we do have a lot of magazines and blogs that talk about Disney, but I think they, sometimes they get all the basic stuff. It's like, oh, come to Magic Kingdom and go to, guess what, Cinderella Castle. It's like, really? Come on, guys. You know, let's, more information. So that's what I decide to write. I don't write as often as I wish I well, could. Well, that's good. You're not doing what everyone else is doing. You're trying to do the more obscure. Yeah. So when I write something, I go deep, but it's like, it's going for I try to write for someone that maybe never been here before never heard about when I wrote about the void I was writing for someone that never had no clue what is VR right there's still a lot of people have no idea what this is and, and I was so you know when you write something you feel good it was like oh if they have any questions is there if they have questions like can my child go is there you said we have so much to offer what would be your if you they came to you mm -hmm. Carolina Grabova please make for us the Brazil pavilion how would it look I okay ah, I would do special. yeah that's a tough question I would definitely do something having related to Rio because it's beautiful, the, the, the oh, landscape, the, 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 the Christ Redeemer, it's amazing. Not sure if Disney would go to like that route. That is the icon. That is the icon, that is the country's icon. But we do have a lot of landscape, it's so... Uh, it's just like if we imagine the United States and how wide we are here. Brazil is also a huge country, but we are really long. So we have everything from the rainforest to, uh, yeah, it snows in Brazil, yeah. deep down in the south. But like, it like, doesn't snow. snow in Brazil, not, not stop it. Not a lot, yeah, not a lot, but in the south does, like no, furries, a, a snow furries. So if they had to make a ride for the Brazil, if there was a Brazil mm -hmm. pavilion and they made a ride. I would like to see A all rainforest those ride. Oh, the rainforest ride, okay. it would be awesome. And they have the Disney link for that oh. Rio the movie uh, oh that and that's not Disney what Rio the movie isn't Disney what do you mean isn't Disney it's not <gasps> what? I know I love Rio I love it but it's not who Disney. made that Disney who made that movie I don't know but I think <gasps> I it, might, it might be Sony it doesn't matter Is it? and there's a part two I don't think I saw okay so I have to thank you so much for coming back a second time I know that they're going to say it was worth it uh, I hope so. And it we'll was have my you pleasure. Back again as you do more things. We're going to check out your YouTube channel, watch the commercials, and look at the blog, even though many of us probably can't read it, but we're going to try. Google Translate, guys. Thank you, <laughs> really, I appreciate it. And there you have it, show number 52. Thank you again for joining. Uh, I have a great show in store for next month. We have an exciting guest, Heis von Winkelhoff, a musical genius. And I am not using that term loosely. Uh, once again, let me thank my exclusive partner, that is Magical Vacation Planner. If you or anyone are planning a trip to Walt Disney World, you owe it to yourself to check out Magical Vacation Planner, or you can just go to pandamvp.com and uh, fill out that form for a no obligation quote. Call the number 407-442-3105 to be connected with a Magical Vacation Planner specialist. They are a Disney earmarked authorized travel agency. Go forth, create pandemonium, and keep giving out those panda hugs. I love seeing you guys in the park. Uh, please don't hesitate to come up to me. Stop me if I'm doing something. Just say hello. It means the world to me and uh, makes me feel relevant to all that you guys are and uh, do. Thank you. Until next time, panda out. Ah, not panda out. Tricked you. I want to see if you lasted this long. <laughs> For the prize this month, it is a panda shirt. There's a men's panda shirt and a woman's panda shirt. Simply put any comment you can on this YouTube channel, give it a thumbs up, and make sure you're subscribed to BigFatPanda.com. If you can, share BigFatPanda.com for me. Tell a friend. That is the best gift that you could possibly give me for my birthday, which is in November, or even the holiday season. Just share BigFatPanda.com for me. Thanks again, and this time for real. Panda out. <laughs>